Hello there. I'm sorry if you're uncomfortable residing in my decontamination chamber like that. This will only take a moment. I just need to decontaminate you before I can grant you access to my ship. If you wouldn't mind holding your breath for me when the machine activates, because this won't taste or smell particularly pleasant to you. Decontamination sequence will begin in three, two, one. Decontamination sequence complete. Okay then. Looks like you're ready to roam the rest of my ship freely. It's protocol to do this regrettably. Even though the bacteria you have won't affect me personally, should anyone else visit my ship, their immune systems... They may not be accustomed to what bacteriums your planet has to offer. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind making your way to the elevator in front of you, I'll be waiting for you in my ship's helm. I can control the elevator remotely, so there's no need to interact with the center console when you get in. Now traveling to the helm. Floor one. From Decontamination point 3A. Elevator stopping. Self destruct activated. Total annihilation in T minus 10 <laughs> seconds. You must not have understood when I said don't Nine, touch the center console. Eight, this was why. Seven, I can't blame you six, though. I've set the ship to self-destruct more times than I care four, to admit. Three, ship, override self-destruct sequence and continue sending elevator 3A to the main helm. Oh, stupid thing. Self-destruct sequence aborted. My apologies. Ship's normal functions will continue to commence. We are now arriving at the helm. Floor one. There you are. Salutations, human. It's truly a pleasure to make your acquaintance. It's probably a good idea if I remove the self-destruct button from the elevator consoles, isn't it? <laughs> I'll remember that for the future. It's not very practical, really, is it? Oh, uh, I have to say, I was so worried you- <coughs> Oh, dear. Did you hurt your hand just then when you punched me? Oh, please don't feel threatened by me. I mean you absolutely no harm whatsoever. You don't need to... <sighs> you don't need to attack me. Please, accept this gift as a token of my sincerity towards that fact. I mean you no harm. Ah. <laughs> See? How could I be dangerous if I'm giving you these? Why am I giving you flowers? Well, they aren't really flowers, I have to admit. <laughs> My ship can replicate almost anything, so I asked it to make me some, just in case you were less than impressed that I abducted you so suddenly. I've studied humans for a short while now, and your people seem to offer each other flowers when they want to encourage a positive reaction from each other. In fact, I once witnessed a human give another human flowers, and it led to them, um... Well, it led to them reproducing, shall we say. <laughs> the very act of giving flowers is so enjoyed amongst your kind, it furthers your race. So, I thought I'd give you these to help relax you a bit. 
No, absolutely not. I'm not trying to mate with you. I'm just trying to calm you down and bring your emotions to a level where you'll be more willing to accept what I've done here and let me explain myself and why I've done it in the first place. <laughs> That's all. That's the only reason. Y you don't have to keep them if you don't want to. Good question. Why are you here? Well, the reason why, and I'd just like to start off by saying again, you aren't in any danger, and you aren't my prisoner. You can leave any time you want, but if that's what you want, if that's what you desire, please let me explain myself first. I wouldn't want you to go home hating me, because I assure you, my intentions are not bad. So, um, my name, it's Unit XIN-62351. I'm a biologically engineered being from the planet Bendrek. My kind call people like me synths, but I've taken to just naming myself Zin, because it's more practical, <laughs> and it makes me feel like less of a thing and more of a person. I was made to be stronger, more resilient, and even more attractive than most other beings out there in the universe. So, when I come into contact with people like you, who I'm studying, who have never seen the likes of me before, you feel at ease, and you don't get threatened by me. But that is only in very, very rare situations. And we are technically forbidden from interacting with other races we find on our expeditions. So, this is a very unique, unique event you're witnessing here. I brought you aboard my ship because, frankly, you were in the right place at the right time. I was studying a mushroom that was near the field you were sitting on a bench on, and, well, I decided to bring you up here to be my, uh, my first interaction with a human. Oh, I should mention, you are currently aboard the Deltron 21. Say hi, ship. Hi, ship. <laughs> uh, he's kind of shy. He gets a little sarcastic when he's shy. <laughs> but yeah. That's Deltron, my ship's interface. Uh, you could say I took advantage of the fact you were alone, but that's a gross misinterpretation of the situation, because I'm not taking advantage of anything. Merely the timing, I guess. <laughs> I don't need anything from you. I don't need your blood or to examine your body or anything like that. I, I, I just wanted to... I mean, I just needed to interact with you and get a feel for what a real human is actually like. It is forbidden to do this, but I... Um, I think it's necessary to break the rules ever so often for science. Scientific research. <laughs> um, look, I understand your apprehension. You've been taken away suddenly to a place you've never seen before, and now a strange man with pointy ears is telling you he's... Well, I'm sure you'd refer to me as an alien, wouldn't you? <laughs> Any human would be nervous in your situation, but please, you will not be harmed. And I will return you, um, once I've gathered enough data from you. With your consent, of course. Are you dreaming? No, I'm quite certain you're not dreaming. This is very real. Hey, if you like, um, there is something we could do. I can ascend from the skies and take you to see what your planet looks like from a distance. 
if that would help prove it to you, pr prove to you the situation that's happening. <laughs> We're only about 300 kilometers in the air currently, so this will only take a moment. Would you be interested in that before I take you? You're not scared of heights, are you? Really? Uh, well, you're very brave, and this will only take a moment. We're just gonna quickly pop to space and back. <laughs> Ship, ascend from our current location by approximately 400,000 kilometers. That should do it. And when completed, face the Earth and open shutters 13A. In the helm, please. Beginning ascension. Hmm? Oh, yes. There's only me aboard this ship. I'm the only alien here, as you say. <laughs> it's funny, to us, you'd be the aliens. Uh, then again, I kind of feel like an alien on my own planet. Being a synth and all. People look at me as they would any other appliance. I'm just a thing, you know? So... Maybe I am an alien. <laughs> That's a very accurate description. Ascension complete. Opening window shutter 13A. In the helm. Ah, there she is. That is the beautiful blue diamond you've been living on your whole entire life. Drifting through space without a care in the world. Earth is a truly magnificent planet. <laughs> You're very lucky to have such a wonderful home. It took me nearly a hundred years to get here. We can travel slightly faster than the speed of light using our space exploration technology. But even so, there's a lot of distance between your world and mine. <laughs> You keep asking me that, so I'll assure you once more. I swear on my honour as an exploration synth that this is absolutely real. This isn't a dream. You are without a doubt in space. You are aboard the Deltron 21 spacecraft and you are standing next to an extraterrestrial looking down on your own planet. And that is, without a doubt, your planet. <laughs> yep, this is truly very real. Human. Our race has, uh, well, the race that made me has incredible interstellar travel capabilities. But your planet is the furthest we've ever travelled. Hence why they sent me, and not a crew. But gosh, look at that thing. It was so worth it. Truthfully, I think they got the raw deal, not me. Because they're missing out on something magical. Uh oh, yes. Our planet is, uh... Our, our planet back home is beautiful. But it's not half as beautiful as yours. Bendrek is much larger than your planet, and we have a lot more resources. Plus, that's not the only planet we inhabit. We are what you would call a Type 2 civilization. We can harness the power from local stars, and we have technologies that you could only dream of. We're desperate to push past that, though, and become a Type 3 civilization, taking command of not just the local planets and stars, but entire galaxies, including black holes and supernovas. If we could harness energy from those, we'd... we'd have truly unlimited possibilities. But, uh, personally, I don't think we'll be evolving to Type 3 anytime soon. Even for us, it's no easy feat.
Yes, indeed I am. That's my job, all in all. <laughs> I'm tasked with finding and studying alien life forms on other planets. I don't interfere, though. Um, usually, anyway. <laughs> I'm simply here to watch and learn. But in this case, the reason why I decided to... delve in a little closer is because I've never encountered a life form with such a complex and, well, beautiful way of communicating. The human race has some amazing communication skills. You just say it like it is, you, you just put your feelings and your passion out there like it's nothing, and it's just so, so fascinating to me. So that's why I made the choice to present myself to you. Because I thought I could reason with you and... I guess maybe even befriend you a little. <laughs> You're barely a type 1 civilization, considering you guys still burn fossil fuels to power your vehicles. In fact, the fact you do that shows that you're a type 0 civilization. <laughs> but your ability to feel and think and just interact with one another is that of a type 4, in my opinion. I couldn't help myself but speak to you. The human race is truly interesting. That is a very astute question. How come I can speak your language? Well, one of the many things my creators gave me when they engineered me was the ability to learn an entire language at an immense pace. I found some discarded books on what your race would call a landfill. And I examined them, and within three Earth days, I learned nearly every one of your languages in its entirety. I even know specific slangs and colloquialisms to seem even more... Um... Human, I guess. <laughs> so that's pretty, um... Groovy, as you would say, right? Right? <laughs> You're laughing at me. That's the first time I've seen you laugh. Um, granted, my language skills do need a little work, but they're still functional, as you can tell. And as I can tell from this interaction. <laughs> oh, and ship, close the shutters and descend back to where we originally were when we picked up the human. We don't want to drift off into the sun now, do we? <laughs> Closing shutters. Beginning descent. No, uh, your people won't be able to see my ship, don't worry. I have an active camouflage surrounding it which makes it impossible to see, or even be detected with any of your computer systems. Even if one of your planes flies a little too close to me, Deltron can discreetly redirect its flight path to miss me. Descent completed. Don't worry, there's absolutely no chance of me being seen. <laughs> um, can I ask you something? Are you aware of a theory you humans created called the Zoological Hypotheses? It's regarding extraterrestrial life such as myself. Well, to put it simply, the zoo hypothesis assumes that a civilization such as me and mine may have millions and millions of years of evolution on you and yours, which is technically the truth, and because of that, your best efforts to detect us will always fail, due to our technological advances being superior to yours. Well... We subscribe to a similar way of thinking to that, actually. Most of the time, this is because we simply don't need to interact with you, and other times it's for our own safety, as well as yours. 
So the human race is... Well, it's kind of like a wildlife preserve to us. Not that I'm calling you an animal or anything. It's just we don't interfere with planets lower on the evolutionary scale than ours. Because, as I said, it could be dangerous for us both. One day, though, when you've advanced enough, we'll introduce ourselves. Or maybe you'll even find us and beat our technology in our efforts to hide. <laughs> but until then... We simply mean to bear witness, that's all. You need to stop asking such fantastic questions because you can see right through me, can't you? Even with all my intelligence and abilities, you still best me at the art of conversation like none other. Why did I break protocol then? If it's so dangerous to interact with you and it's so against what we believe in, then why did I make myself known? Why am I speaking to you right now? And it's because, as I stated earlier, you people are just amazing to me. I've never seen a race of people so brilliant at displaying emotions. The passion and the intensity the human race has is unlike anything I've ever seen. Emotions are very fascinating to me. I just had to speak to one of you. I know speaking to just one human wouldn't hurt, so I did. I mean, as long as I don't tell any of my superiors, well, yeah, it will be like it never happened. I just couldn't help myself. Emotions aren't something I come across all that often, considering my only friend is <laughs> my ship. So I just thought, why not? You are just too incredible to me. And this opportunity won't come along again, I don't think. You're welcome. <laughs> you are incredible. I mean that. See, this is what I'm saying. Your sense of humour during... Uh, intense moments and your ability to love during the most horrendous of times and... The human race's strength and willpower when there's absolutely no hope, it's just incredible to me. There is no other race out there like it. One day, when you become a Type 2 or a Type 3 civilization, I assure you, you will be the most powerful there ever was. I'd be lying if I said I didn't wish I was a human. Anything's better than just being a biological machine, though, I suppose. <sighs> being a human, I'd have so many more opportunities. I'd have so much I could do and so much I could experience. Instead, I'm just a machine my people use to explore distant lands. I'm not even technically a member of my own race. And they like to make that fact very clear. I I'm not a robot, no. <laughs> I'm a little more than that. I do have some cybernetic implants, but they aren't noticeable. I was created by my people on the planet Bendrak. That's our main home world. They refer to themselves as the Benians, my people. I was made to explore, like I said. They needed a creature that didn't really age, that would be able to survive even the most harshest of environments and, well, encounters the universe has to offer. I was engineered in a laboratory, and I was created to be biologically perfect. I guess. <laughs> My lifespan will most likely be around three to four thousand years, and I'm virtually immune to most physical damage. 
The cybernetic implants they gave me were completely state of the art. They were intended to protect me through some of the most horrendous things. As I said, I was intended to be in some rough situations. Well, um, they gave me an ultrasonic nanofiber that binds to the atoms of my skin, making me incredibly resilient. That's where my strength comes from. They also gave me a magnetic resonance harness implanted into my spine. So, if a planet I explore has a magnetic field, I can interface with it, and, well, I can... Um, it'll be better if I demonstrate. <sighs> I can levitate, see? <laughs> if there's enough magnetic energy surrounding me or the world I'm on, I can actually fly quite spectacularly. <laughs> the other implant I have was a small but unbelievably powerful energy emitter. They implanted one into each one of my eyes. That gives me the ability to fire extremely hot lasers through them. But I'm not going to demonstrate that because I only use that in situations where violence is unavoidable or to protect something very important to me. So yeah, I am the perfect biological machine for space exploration. Even though there's many like me, I'm apparently the strongest of all the synths. They used to be quite scared of me on my home planet. <laughs> I guess that's why they sent me the furthest away. <laughs> but even so, if I die out here, well, it's better than a real person dying. Or so they've told me. <laughs> yeah, so that's me. You think I'm like Superman? You're referring to the tale you humans tell about a person from another world with extraordinary powers, right? Yeah, I came across that in my research of human culture. You have it wrote down in comic books, don't you? As you call them. <laughs> I'd love to agree with you on that, but my abilities are all artificial. Without the implants and the engineering that went into making me, I could never do any of those things. Also, Superman had a mother, and... That's something I've never known, unfortunately. So I'd have to disagree with you. But I appreciate that, regardless. You know, when I was reading about him, I saw how he helped people. How he saved people, and... I just thought, I could do that for your people so easily. If I was allowed to, I could be a hero. But I'm not. So, that's probably the main reason why I'm not like him. But thank you, anyway. <laughs> I appreciate it. Do I have free will? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> I'm still a living organism, so my brain and my consciousness are entirely my own. They wanted it to be that way because they feel emotions are important when making observations. Sometimes I wish they didn't give me free will though, because a hundred years alone can become quite difficult at times. I'm trained for this though. I'm trained to keep my emotions intact. It's what I was bred for. It's what I'm supposed to do. So, yeah, I do have free will, but um, I have to keep it under control. Ah, oh, yes, another astute observation. Why did I act like it hurt me when you punched me earlier if I'm indestructible? 
I, well, for starters, I wouldn't quite say I'm indestructible, but yeah, it didn't hurt me one bit when you punched me. <laughs> I just pretended it did to make you feel more comfortable. I thought if you felt like you could overpower me, then you'd be more at ease, you know? I'd seem more human, even though I'm very far from human. <laughs> Seeing as though my looks didn't really help me in that regard, <laughs> I thought that will. So, yeah, I pretended like you gave me a really good punching. <laughs> no, you're right, it doesn't matter how handsome somebody is. If you get kidnapped by a person, they're scary either way. <laughs> they only gave me these features because they thought a generally attractive face would be good, in case contact with another race was unavoidable. I suppose uh, it makes sense. If you walked in here and you saw a ten foot tall monster with claws for hands, I imagine you'd have been so scared you could have caused a lot of trouble. So, yeah, that's why I look the way I do. You think I'm quite attractive by Earth standards, too? So you think they did a good job? <laughs> well, thank you, that's very kind of you to say. I'll have to tell my creators you said that, they'll be pleased. <laughs> You know, because I still have a biological brain, and emotions and whatnot. Well, I can safely say I find you attractive as well, if that's not too crass of me to put out there. I've seen humans get very defensive about compliments like that, especially if they already have a significant other. But, yeah, if you'd allow me... You're very attractive. That made you blush? Fascinating. That's a sign of shyness, typically brought on by sudden affection, shown by someone you're... into, as you would say. You know, the concept of love is something that has astonished me beyond all other emotions. We were never meant to find love or synths. It's unfair though because we have the ability to feel. And potentially we have the ability to mate as well. But we are taught it was never meant for us. All that matters is the mission. <laughs> love is something that we should repress. But I wish it didn't have to be that way. I would, actually, yeah. I would like to experience love one day. <laughs> I've thought about it a lot, especially during my journey up here. I've thought about what it might feel like to hold someone's hand, or maybe even kiss them. So you can imagine my surprise when I found a planet that was practically ruled by emotions and passion and love. <laughs> it was such a wonderful thing to see. Back home, emotions are... Well, they're important, of course, but... We've evolved to a point where we make sure to control them. So, passionate romance and intense physical connections... We only really see them in media. We very rarely see them anywhere else. Hey, um, now that we're talking and we know each other a little more, can I admit something to you? It's the real reason why I brought you up here. It wasn't just because I wanted to study you. It was because... Well... The real reason why I did this was because when I saw you down there, I thought you looked just like me. Not physically, of course, but emotionally. 
You looked as lonely as I do, sitting there on that park bench. I thought maybe we could be lonely together. Maybe we could even be friends. I just needed someone to talk to. Someone other than my ship. I just needed something real. N no offence, Deltron. None taken. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That wasn't the response I was expecting. But in any case, I'm so, so, so sorry for bothering you. I really shouldn't have done this. This was just an impulsive, reckless move brought on... Brought on by my loneliness. Nothing more. If you want, I can lower you back down and I'll disappear forever. It will be like nothing ever happened. Actually, you wouldn't even need to use the elevator because you've already been decontaminated. I could just beam you down from here if you'd like. You understand how I feel. You actually think I'm pretty cool. Oh, well, thank you so much for calling me cool. <laughs> That's not in regards to my temperature, is it? That's that's when you see me as above average in your eyes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think you're really cool as well. And I beg your pardon, but I don't regret doing this. Talking to you has been wonderful. And I'm really, really happy we met. Gosh, I, I wish I could stay on this planet forever. Humans are so much more real than... Benians. Why don't I? Well, I have a job to do, otherwise I'd be more than happy to stay. Plus, I wouldn't want to encourage the wrath of my planet's forces to come looking for me. They've been known to deactivate synths that go rogue. It's virtually unheard of because we never usually do anything like this, but... I do know of one who was killed because he didn't listen to orders. So it can happen. <laughs> no. I don't have a deactivation button on me. As I said, I'm biological in nature, not mechanical. <laughs> when I say deactivation, I mean they'd come and kill me. They'd have a hard time though, given how strong they made me, but I'm sure they have some kind of contingency plan in case I did. I've often thought how it would go down if I did disobey them, and I imagine they'd They'd probably send a rather large explosion to finish me. Which could potentially hurt you and your world in the process. I wouldn't dare put you in danger like that. Not for my own selfish desires. So no, I can't stay unfortunately. You think I'm sweet, and you feel sorry for me? Thank you, again. Gosh, you make me feel so peculiar inside. I've never experienced this before. It's, it's like, it's like I really want to kiss you or something. But it's very rude to just kiss someone without their consent on your world, so I wouldn't dream of doing that. It, it's just, oh! You've gone all red and flustered again. Did I cross the line in saying that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still getting used to speaking appropriately to your kind. Please forgive me. When I said I wanted to kiss you, I just meant romantically, not like in a creepy way or anything, as you people would say. What if I did have your consent to kiss you? 
Oh, well, in that case, I'd be overjoyed and incredibly nervous because I've never kissed or been kissed by anyone before. I don't think I was ever supposed to do that. So that function is very foreign to me. <laughs> I'd need to be taught. I suppose I am one for breaking the rules. I've been breaking the rules this whole time by talking to you. And I'm even considering asking you to show me. What am I doing? I'm so sorry, but I'm going to... beautiful thing I've ever experienced did I, did I do it right <laughs> was that okay was that appropriate you're gonna teach me how to kiss better in the future that would be a lesson I'd never forget I think I've decided based on that fact alone, I'm going to stick around Earth a little while longer. Do I have your permission to meet you again at some point? I know I'm just an alien in your eyes, but in my eyes you're... You're something very special. Something I didn't even think existed for me. phone number. I can contact you via your mobile whenever I feel like it. My ship would be more than capable of doing that. I'll send you a message or a call then, and we can arrange another meeting soon. In the meantime, I'll let you go. Thank you for everything. Thank you for showing me what a kiss feels like. I've seen the wonders of the universe more times than I could than I could count, but this feeling you've given me it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. I'll hold you to that. Next time we meet, I'll show you anything you want. We can take a trip to some of your local planets. I can take you to Saturn or Venus. I could even take you to the sun if you really wanted to. <laughs> I could show you what it's like to fly like I can. We'll do anything you like. It's only fair. After all you've shown me. Until we meet again then, human. <clears throat> Ship, send them back where I found them. Make sure they have a safe landing. Very well. Beginning transportation sequence. Goodbye, human. Thank you for everything. I'll be seeing you real soon, hopefully. <laughs> oh, you forgot your flowers. <laughs>